Good morning, everybody. Ooh, I am loud. Excellent. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. It is lovely to have you with us. Big happy birthdays to Denise, who's sharing with us this morning. <laughs> A few verses from Psalm 100. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. Let's stand together as we sing for all you've done. to the world we live. Isn't that just an amazing truth that Jesus came? He understands what our lives are like. He understands the things that we go through as human beings. How amazing is that, that the creator of the universe, the creator of you and me, understands us completely because he chose to come to experience that and to give us a way to, I guess, experience him better and to have the opportunity to experience him for eternity. How amazing is that? 
We're going to sing It Is Well together. This is one of my favourite songs. And I pray for each of you this morning that no matter what is going on in your life, that you can say, it is well with my soul. And if you can't say that, that's okay. I challenge you to have a chat with someone this morning and say, look, this is what I'm struggling with. It is not okay with my soul. Can you pray with me? Can you help me so that it is? Let's sing together.
Lord God, thank you. Thank you that through it all, we can keep our eyes on you. God, thank you that you are here with us in the midst of whatever is going on, whatever the storms are in our lives, Lord God. Thank you that you are with us through it all. Lord God, we pray for the parts of our family that are not here this morning, the people who are unwell and have got other things going on, Lord God. We pray for them that they will know that we missed them this morning and that we look forward to seeing them again soon when they're better, Lord God. I just pray you'll surround them with your love, Lord. God, thank you that we can come into your presence and worship you, Lord. God, I pray that everything that happens this morning will be, will be pleasing to your heart, Lord God. God, we lift up Denise to you as she shares with us this morning on her birthday. And we are so thankful for, for her and her willingness to listen to you and to share those things with us, Lord God. God, we pray that everything that happens this morning will lift you up, Lord God, and help you to be more known in this community. Lord, we are so grateful that we have been placed here, Lord, and I pray that you help us to be more evident in this community than we already are, Lord God. God, thank you so much that we can come before you, Lord.
Well, good morning, everyone. Great to see you this morning. Are we awake? Sort of. You awake on stream? Hopefully you are. We've got a few. How many have we got on, Simon? Uh, quite a few. It's good. That's probably because we've got a few that are away and sick and, and yeah, all over the show. So if you're online and watching us today, we, we pray that you'll be blessed as you, uh, as you do so, as we worship God together, as we worship as the church, whether we're in this room or we're in our lounge rooms or bedrooms or in we've had even people listen to us while people are driving while we're driving not that they're watching they're listening which is really good to know but um hello to jessica and sarah who are at home because jess is very unwell so um we we pray that that uh, she recovers quickly but also carolyn um got the vid the dreaded vid so it's good that she's staying put and staying hopefully she's not too unwell but anyway of getting way off track. Hello, everyone here. It's great to see you. If you um, want to connect with us in any way, whether you're changing details or you're new here or you, you want to connect with us online as you've watched this today or later on during the week, fill out the Connect card. There's one at the Connect desk or down below me in the description if you're watching online. We'd love to connect with you that way. A um, few things that are going on, talking about connecting this afternoon or this morning. Well, it depends how long we go for. This morning... This morning, it's okay, Peter, I'm not, not doing your coronary. Um, connect, connect groups are on. If you're not part of a connect group and you want to, um, we meet face-to-face every fortnight in the building. Um, if you're online or you'd rather do it online, we also have about three or four connect groups online during the week. So we'd love to connect with, with you whether you're here or online. There is different ways of, of connecting and being and doing life together. Um, this Friday night as long as one check still comes back. It just all depends on government processes. Vision Youth will be kicking off again. That was terrible. Let's say it again. This Friday night, as long as one connect, one test comes back correctly, Vision Youth will be kicking off. Mildly better. That's great. So I'm really hoping that I might hear a little yes from the kids, but anyway, we won't go there. So um, keep an eye out. We will let you know um, if and when it is happening, um, it, yeah, we are just there's one check that needs to come back um, to make sure we can kick that off and tick all the boxes. So um, we are anticipating we're building towards this Friday night for youth. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, I'm wearing socks today. That's not an unusual occurrence, but I can't lift my leg any higher than that at the moment. I'm a bit tight in the old hamstrings. But it's Red Shield Appeal Week. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Red Shield Appeal Week. Actually, you, you'll see on the news that it's all over the news and all in the papers and on the radios that this is Red Shield Weekend. So um, Red Shield is the opportunity for us to go and connect with our community. And um, you've heard me say that 100% of the money that's raised stays in this community, goes towards the programs and the, the, the things that we do. Um, Christmas cheer, uh, single parents, um, those kind of programs. So um, we have our second week coming up. Thank you to those guys that have collected already. I know there's a number of people who have done a number of shifts um, and there's people that have done one shift. It's been fantastic. We've been able to cover all our spots. We do have a lot of holes still for the coming week. So I would love if you're able to, um, I think there's even some next Saturday. So if you work during the week, it's okay. We've got spots for you. Don't fret. Um, but actually, talking about that, hang on, I'm just going to change something here on here and do this. I'm trying to work with technology here. And sometimes, as you, we all know, technology doesn't always work. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do that and that. And Josiah, can you put up the... Hey, hey, it worked. So if you can't collect but you go, you know, I've got 27,564 friends on Facebook... That's my friend count, not. And yeah, hey, thank you, Simon. <laughs> there is a way you can collect online. It's called the digital door knock. Now, to, to, to get this happening, this is our website. If you haven't been on our website, salvationarmy.org.au forward slash golden grove. Everyone say it with me salvationarmy.org.au forward slash golden grove. Actually, forward slash goes that way. Not that way, that's a backslash, that's a forward slash. You'll land on this, your, uh, our website, and if you scroll down, oh, it's not working. 
Oh, it's working on here, but it's not working. Here we go. Look at that. Sunday Online's here. Look at this. Look at this. If I clicked Sunday is here, we'd actually be online. We'd be watching it. I could. <laughs> Should I? Yeah. Oh, that's an overwhelming yes. Hang on. Let's see. What the... so let's, see let's have a look. Sunday is here. We're going to YouTube. This might really freak the system out big time. Here we go. Let's see where we're at. Mm -hmm, maybe not. It's probably because I am, we're streaming on the, the internet and then I'm downloading and then on the network I'm sending this to the computer which is then sending it to the... Hang on, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Anyway, it was a trial. It didn't work. It didn't work. Now I've probably... Hang on. Oh, there we go. We're back. So I'm going to keep scrolling down here. You, this, oh, we're back on our website now, just in case I've lost you. We're back on our website. And we scroll down a bit further. And Oh, there's me again. Yuck. Let's not go there. Um, and you can see here it says, Golden Grove, thank you for supporting the Red Shield Appeal and Digital Door Knock. And if you click on Donate here, do, 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 do. I'm really freaking it out. Anyway, it'll catch up. When you go donate here, it'll take you to our, donate, our online donation page. And what I'm recommending that you do is you click on the address at the top in the, in the, the bar across the top of your computer or on your iPad. See, it? See where it says right at the very top, digitaldoorknock.salvationarmy.org.au? It's coming. It's coming slowly. There we go. Look at that. So click up on the top up here. Highlight that. Save it and then paste it into your Facebook feed. Does that make sense? Sort of. If you want to clarify that, come and see me later on. If you copy that and stick that in your Facebook, it'll take people straight to our donate page. And that way people can donate to the Salvation Army, to our um, Red Shield appeal. Now, I don't know whether you can see, Golden Grove Salvos, our goal for online is $5,000 for online. We're sitting at $3,071 at the moment. Now I know someone gave a few months ago they are $70, so there's $3,001 that has been raised by the wonderful Wallers, Christine's effort that's been doing some amazing work, they have raised $3,000 all on, online already. That is unbelievable. Well done guys, well done Christine. The work that she's done is amazing. And so um, it can be done quite easily. Um, she's held a couple of events, but just grab that thing across the top, stick it on your Facebook page, and don't just put it out there just willy-nilly. They, they say to, to actually invite the people that you know. So go select all your friends, all 227,651 of them. Was that the same number? I don't think it was. Um, and then send it to them. And that way we can see what we can raise online. Um, I don't know exactly how we've gone so far yet with our tin rattling. Um, we're going to confirm that this afternoon, but next week we will, we'll be able to tell you exactly how much we've raised. Um, can you jump off that, please, Josiah? So you don't... There we go. Thank you. I'll go back to here. Technology sort of worked. So that's one way that you can collect if you can't collect. If you can collect, there's rosters over on the Connect desk. We'd love to fill those spots. Um, it helps us connect with our community, meet some lovely new people and, um, and just share the love. Um, on next Sunday is our Red Sunday. So come dressed in as much red as possible and um, we're going to have a donation for soup and, soup and salves. You don't call them salves anymore. Anyone remember the old big old fat salves, savaloys? How good were they? Now you get those silly footy frank things. They're just thin little, yeah, anyway. Um, I'm getting off the track. So we're going to be eating red stuff. Red stuff. I did, there's going to be pumpkin soup if you don't like tomato soup. I did try and get them to put red food colouring in it. So it's red pumpkin. No, I'm getting a very vigorous shake of the head by a number of people. So we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> Um, but just come along next week. We'll be, we're going to have some fun. Talking about fun, um, on the Monday of the long weekend is the Red Shield Games Day um, being organised by the COVID gang. 
Um, but it'll be, it'll be a great day. So come along on Monday the 13th between 10 and 6. Uh, Any time you can come along between those hours. Um, there'll be board games. There'll be fun games that are happening on the hour. So it will be uh, a great day. Um, finally, just to let you know that this week, if you didn't know, is um, uh, National Reconciliation Week. And just wanted to mention that we're going to do a segment le- next Sunday, but um, we want to we want to make this significant, so we want to spend some, a little bit of time on that, and we also want Patricia to be here. She can't be with us this week, so um, we'll talk a little bit more about that Indigenous artwork, um, which is specific to the Salvation Army, so um, we'd love to see you. But just to, um, just to reiterate, this whole week is National Reconciliation Week. Um, I'm going to invite everyone, if you're able to, to be on your feet and stand for me. That's really what on your feet means, doesn't it? And um, we're going to play a, a video clip, and guess where the kids are going? Kids, kids Church, let's clap them out. Turn it up, guys. Turn it up. We have a great bunch of kids and a great bunch of kids leaders and we are so grateful for them. Um, Just remain sitting there, just take the music down a little bit and I'm going to pray for our kids. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these awesome bunch of kids. We thank you for the leaders that look after them. We thank you for uh, your spirit that is in that room and the prayer that's happened already. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you might impact them deeply today through fun, through drawing, through just being together and hearing the message about you. So, Lord, we pray for our kids, for their future. Um, We pray specifically for them right now that you might bless them abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can take your seats now. Just want to quickly mention, um, thank you for those that give online and that you give in person today. Um, There'll be the velvet receptacle. We'll be at the back being held by a lovely person. I'm going to get myself in trouble again um, if you would like to give cash. If not, uh, there's our information on if you would like to give online or set up your, your, um, your tithe to go in directly. Um, it is just amazing how so many people have, have got on and have now switched to, to online giving. And it's really, really good. Julie loves it. Um, it just makes life easy in so many ways. For us, for you, um, it gives us an opportunity to give to God. In with, I'm going to say with minor discomfort. Actually, that shouldn't. That's not right. I'm going to. I'm going to take that back. Jesus asks us to give sacrificially. Um, so I don't, I'm going to challenge you with your giving. Give sacrificially to God's work, God's work here, so we can continue to spread His message to our community. Talking about His Word and His work. Time for Scripture. Thanks, Neil. Um, Hi everyone, I'll be reading the Bible today. Um, The Bible reading comes from John 11, 1 to 7, 17 and 32 to 44. And I'll be reading in the New Living Translation. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters Mary and Martha. This was the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it will happen for the glory of God so that the Son of God will will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. He was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him. But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? 
Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave cloths, his face wrapped in a headcloth. Jesus told them, Unwrap him and let him go. Amen. Thank you very much, Perry. <laughs> Thanks, Rog. <clears throat> I've had lots of messages and phone calls, so thank you for those that have done that. It's made my morning very special. <clears throat> So we're looking today at, are you bound? Look at the man's face, would you? (laughs) And um, we'll see where we go with that this morning. But our creator God in his infinite wisdom and his love chose to create people. You and me, the pinnacle of his creation knowing full well that we would choose our ways over his and make a mess. We are made with the capacity to live out of our own strength. And I wonder who here this morning has been guilty of this. And I need to be number one to say me. And as a result, we see in scripture and in our own lives, the failure that this brings. We see it in the declining morality of society. We see it in the terrible situations that are around us in our society today as well. And many live in desperate places because of the moral decline. As you probably, as we've heard already, it's Red Shield Sunday in the Salvation Army this week. And many of us have been collecting for the Red Shield. If you can do some more, please put your name in the spot. That would be good for this week. But you might be interested to know that every 17 seconds, every 17 seconds, that's an incredible amount, isn't it? The Salvation Army in Australia helps someone either in one of our services or programs or through emergency relief, who find themselves homeless or traumatised because of domestic violence or abandoned, those suffering addiction. And we provide emergency relief in lots of other ways as well. That was staggering when I read that, that every 17 seconds... The Salvation Army is helping someone. I was pleased to hear that, but I was sad that that is our world. But I'm grateful that we can help people in need. In the Word of God, we have recorded many incredible stories of both victories and failures for us to learn from. But the difference between those who failed and those who lived in victory is the place that God has in their lives. And this, of course, is the same today. And as Jordan reminded us last Sunday, what fuels us determines how well we do life. I hope you've enjoyed the messages on our church's Facebook this week. Um, a few, few of us have put things up just to um, read and to help us in being refueled each day from the scriptures. But you know, there's only one constant in this ever-changing world that we live in, and that is the character of God. 
Our world changes. We change. Our circumstances change. But there is only one thing that remains constant, the character of God. And by this, I'm referring to the the Godhead, not just the God the Father, but God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. He is unchanging. He's unwavering. He's completely faithful and is committed to fulfilling his promises in our lives and to being our strength in our weakness. And he helps us live the Christian life in the culture that we live in today. And what I'm so grateful is that God is still in the business of changing lives. But it's his heart that we, his people, get involved in the ministry of helping people heal and recover from addiction, trauma, any sort of difficulty in actual fact that might be part of what we experience. Charles Spurgeon was a, um, known in the 19th century as the Prince of Preachers. And he said this, What a man can do for himself, God will not do for him. And what Christian people can do for sinners, they must not expect the Lord to do. They must work themselves according to the ability God has given them, sorry, according to the ability God has given them up to the point of possibility. And then they may look for divine interposition or intervention. That's a pretty powerful statement. He was a an amazing man. We went to his church in that he'd built years ago when we were in England, a few long time ago now. Um, and it was one of these austere churches where the, the people were down there. I don't even like being up here, but this had this great big pulpit. And the guy was, the preacher was way up there, so removed from the congregation. And um, he came in. And then he went out, and then nobody saw him. So that was very interesting. Not Spurgeon, but the guy that was there when we were there in that church. But he was a great man of God. Let's have a look this morning then at the passage and see how we can explore this truth. Whilst we had a long reading, and thank you to Neil for reading that for us today, to give us the full picture of the story of Lazarus being sick and ultimately dying, and then the miracle of him, Jesus raising him from the dead, I want to focus on just three verses this morning. Verse 35, verse 39, and verse 44. The first verse, verse 35, is the shortest verse in the Bible. It often used to be used for gospel shots when we used to go out in the streets. I think it really was because that's the only one people could remember. <laughs> but you know, this word, this verse, although it's the shortest word uh, verse in Scripture, it so says so much about the heart of God. Jesus, in his humanity, shed tears over his friend's death. Even though he knew he was going to raise him from the dead, Jesus cried. He didn't wail like those mentioned in the scripture, but it was a silent crying. Jesus was moved by the pain of his friend's loss. And you know, Jesus always sees the tears of the grief-stricken and he is moved with compassion. Not only for those who lose people in death, but for those of us who have other losses or have life situations that bring us trauma or brokenness in some way. Jesus sees and he hears and he is grief-stricken with us. And he's moved with compassion. 
God sees our tears and is touched by them in such a way that it says in Psalm 56 and verse 8, you keep track of all my sorrows, you have collected all my tears in your bottle, you have recorded each one in your book. Jesus weeping in quiet grief over his friend's death declares to us that there is no shame in tears. Jesus was well acquainted with grief and he identifies with us in our sorrows because he loves us. He loves us, his people. And sometimes we find it hard to get our our head around that. Perhaps we've not been loved so much in growing up in our family. And so for us to understand that God loves us, that's really difficult. But God loves his people so much that he identifies us with us in our sorrow. God is not a compassionless God who is distant and unfeeling, but rather, as it says in Isaiah 53 and verses 3 to 4, he was, res- re- sorry, he was despised and rejected. He was a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried, it was our sorrows that weighed Jesus down. Our God feels. He feels for the human person. He feels for you and me. And in the example that Jesus set, we see that he not only identifies with us, but he he feels with us and he cares with us. He experienced in his humanity all the emotions that we feel, yet he was without sin. And that is why it tells us in Hebrews 4, 15 to 16, where it says, This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings that we do, yet he did not sin. So... Let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God because there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. So not only does Jesus identify with us in our sorrow and cries with us when we hurt and when we grieve, he also knows that some of the situations of life we face are terrible. And they're smelly, so to speak. But Jesus doesn't shrink back from them. Rather, let's have a look at verse 39. He says to Mary and Martha, he says, roll the stone aside. But Martha, the dead man's sister, she was always the very vocal one of the two. I know a lot of us identify with Martha, don't we, Teresa? Um, And it's not bad to identify with her, but Mary was more quiet and reserved. But Martha spoke up and she said the dead man's... uh, She said, protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. But it doesn't faze Jesus, does it? Because he responds to Martha... He says, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? He gets right in there amidst the smell and does his thing. He gets on with his work and in this case of resurrecting Lazarus. Because he says, didn't I tell you that you would see God's God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone away and then Jesus looks up to heaven and he prays. And then he says this almighty, great word, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out and his hands and feet bound in grave cloths and his face wrapped in a head cloth. What 
What a moment for the family. Jesus came out of the grave. You know, if Jesus hadn't have said Lazarus and he just said, come forth, the cemetery would have been emptied because of the power that Jesus has. And this is very important for us today. This actual picture of him coming out of the grave clothes. Can we have the picture, please, Pete? This is kind of what he would have looked like when he came out of the grave. Spurgeon wrote, how he moved I, moved, I do not know. Some of the old writers thought that he glided, as it were, coming out through the air, and this was part of the miracle. But then he says, I think he may have been so bound that though he could not freely walk, yet he would shuffle along like a man in sackcloth. The thing about it is that Jesus wants to get into your mess and my mess as well as he did get into the mess and the smell that that would have come because of this dead man coming out of the grave. It might be first to bring you to spiritual life and bring you from death to life and give us spiritual bodies and able to relate to God in relationship. But then he wants to do whatever it takes for us to be made whole. The mess doesn't make Jesus shrink back. Neither is he surprised by it. Nothing is hidden from him and he still loves us and wants our freedom. Isn't that amazing? Whenever Jesus does our work in our life, his work in our lives, it is always so that those who witness it might believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is God sent to be the saviour of the world and to bring healing and wholeness to our lives. I wonder this morning, how might you need Jesus to get involved in your mess today? You might be in a big one, but nothing, friends, is too big for God to fix. Amen. I want to read a story about a girl who came to the Salvation Army when she was desperate. And her name was Chloe. When Chloe first came to the Salvation Army, she was feeling like her life was hardly worth living. She describes her journey as a long and twisted story marked by a troubled youth, homelessness, domestic violence, poor mental health and loss. Chloe's parents broke up when she was just a baby. Every fortnight for six years, she and her older sisters would stay with their father and his new family until he abandoned them completely a few years later. They just disappeared off the face of the earth and we were given no explanation. So me and my sisters were thinking, what did we do? Were we not good enough? Growing up in a remote country town, Chloe's grandma played a significant role in raising her and her sisters. So when she passed away, the family took it hard. Her mother withdrew and her sisters began self-harming. Chloe says it was not unusual for her sisters to be in the hospital repeatedly, leading to decisions that put her on the path of years of instability, homelessness and abuse. Everything went downhill really bad. I found myself very isolated, she says, really having no one there for me. I got with my partner when I was about 16 and it was just chaotic. 
we were just both lost souls. He became really violent. And when her boyfriend was sent to jail for assaulting her, Chloe was given the opportunity and motivation to get her life back on track. But when he was released, he returned to his former ways. I don't even know everything that happened, but I was locked in a room and he was just storming around the house with a gun. It was an absolute nightmare. When he finally fell asleep, I snuck out of the window but he heard me in the process and there was a struggle before I finally got out. While her partner went back to jail for his violence, Chloe was highly traumatised, deeply depressed and became suicidal. She was living in a storage shed at that time but had managed to keep the car she had bought on finance. She was devastated, therefore, when the car was stolen and set alight along with all her belongings. They burned it out. I didn't even have clothes to put on my back. I lost all my clothes, all my photos of my nan. You name it, every last sentimental thing that I had was burnt in that car, she says. Chloe realised that if she didn't seek help, there was a strong likelihood that she would die either by her own hands or someone else's. She had to find a way to start over, but didn't know how. I thought I'll try the Salvation Army. I was an absolute mess when I got there, but I've never felt more assured in my life. After so many years of no support, just being in such a negative mind state and wishing life was over, to walk through those doors at the Salvos, I instantly felt this is right. Chloe says the salvos helped her in ways she couldn't help herself. The workers were amazing and a couple of ladies I still have as really close friends. Now every Tuesday night, Chloe will join volunteers at the Salvation Army to take food, blankets and other necessities to the city's homeless. We just stop and chat and give them a warm meal. If they need blankets, we give them to them. It's a good reminder of where I've come from, she says. It's safe to say that if it wasn't for that stab in the dark and coming here and going to the Salvation Army, then I wouldn't be where I am today. I've got a whole new outlook. I've got my own house. I'm studying TAFE and I'm hoping to be a youth worker in an agency. It's a good reminder to help others, she says. And if I can help kids, then it's worthwhile. What a great story. A great story that shows God's heart for you and me. Because he wants you and I also to be involved in making this happen in people's lives today. And I'm grateful that it's happening in this place. And this week, things have just happened here. And we say praise God for that. But he wants more. Let's look at the final verse of 40, phrase of verse 44. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let Lazarus go. Jesus didn't miraculously move the grave clothes that still bound Lazarus, but he asked his attendants to do it for him. You see, Jesus did what only he could do, and that was to bring Lazarus back to life. And then he looked for those around him to cooperate in the freeing of Lazarus from being bound. Jesus raised him to life again, but for him to be wholly free, Jesus engaged the help of his friends. And this is how Jesus still works today. Jesus does the work of bringing hope and restoration to people's lives through salvation, but then he asks those of us in the church to unwrap the grave clothes of those he saves. Sometimes even before they're saved, we do this process of unwrapping the grave clothes that are binding people up. 
And he asks you and me to do that today. He wants to unwrap the grave clothes through discipleship, through prayer, through healing ministry, through recovery programs like CareForce that we do, through mentoring, through providing practical help with food and clothing, housing, and the list goes on and on and on. Freeing people from their grave clothes, friends, is the work of disciples. You know, our lives are a little bit like onions. Pete, could you chuck me the onion, please? It's in my handbag. (laughs) I got this out of my fridge last night. It's got a bit of a thing on the end. Who likes peeling onions? I don't, because every time I do, I cry. But, you know, the outer skin is pretty tough, isn't it? And you take it off, and there's still more. And then you take that one off. I'm not going to continue to do it because I don't like the smell. But underneath, there's another layer which is a little bit more soft. And then another layer. Oh, it smells. Sorry about that. But our lives are like that. The outer skin is tough. There are so many more layers inside that need to be peeled off so that we can become all that God intends for us to be because we can't use that outer stuff. It doesn't taste too good in your food. And so it needs to be peeled back so we can eventually get to the part that God can use in our lives. It's scary sometimes even to contemplate walking alongside someone to help them be freed, isn't it? Let alone being part of doing it. But if we allow Jesus to use us, we have a great promise. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, which he says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness, so now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work Through me. Our God promises to strengthen, to enable, and just to give you all you need to help other people. From my experience, it's the most humbling privilege to walk alongside someone who is struggling in life. And sure, I don't have all the answers, and neither will you. But we can be there as a friend, we can do what we can do, and then we can engage others to help where we don't know how to. All it takes is for you and me to be willing to ask God the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you and work in and through you in every situation you find yourself in. Ask him to Guide your words. Ask him to guide your actions. And give him the praise when he shows up and does his thing. As we close this morning, I invite the team to come, please. <clears throat> We're going to sing a reflective song in just one moment. But before we do that, I would like to ask us two questions this morning. And the first one is this. How might Jesus want you to be involved in freeing the grave clothes from those who are still bound up so that they can be free in Jesus? But then secondly, I want to ask this question. What might still be binding you this morning? What might God need to free you of today? It could be of an addiction. It could be of pride. It could be that you are just in a hopeless situation and you don't know what to do. God wants to help you 
and to help others unbind those things so that you become whole. I invite you to stand and as the worship team come, I pray that we might respond to Jesus this morning. You may have some layers of that onion that needs peeling back. And if you do, then please make yourself available this morning to God and come, we can pray here at the front. We have a prayer team that's playing. Pray, we'd be happy to pray with you this morning at the back. But allow Jesus this morning to speak into your life as we sing the beautiful song, I Speak Jesus. Please respond to a God who cares. Amen.
I don't think there's any mistake about the way the songs have run today. I mean, that's a, that's a God thing. The songs, I don't know whether you picked up early on, spoke about our soul, about our soul being right with God. That God, you have all of me. It's, it's not about our, our thoughts, not about our emotion, but it's about our soul being right with God. And then we're challenged by Denise this morning, by through God's Word, to be people that join Him in the work that He is doing in, 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 in tearing open the cloth that, that bind, the things that bind us personally, but also those that do life around us. So the challenge this morning is, are we right with God? How's your soul? How's your soul? Because on the cross, Jesus spread His arms open wide and died for you and me. And I have this image of my Saviour doing that for us this morning, saying, come to me, I am ready. And I want to envelop you in my arms. But then there's this challenge. Then there's this challenge. I have done that for you. Now I go and do that for someone else. To walk alongside someone, to help them break through the addiction, to, to help them through a tough time in their life, to join Jesus in what He's doing. He spoke the, the divine to bring Lazarus from the grave and then said, okay, come on, join me. Are you ready to join Him this morning? Are you ready to join Him this morning? One brilliant way we could, actually there's two ways we can do that. One is by shouting the name of Jesus, speaking the name of Jesus over our friends, over our families, over our loved ones, over our neighbours, over that person down the street that you really don't get along with because they leave their bins out in the road uh, and you've got to drive, you know, I don't care what's going on in your life, what's ticking you off, Jesus still asks you to speak His name over them. And the other one is to come alongside and love on people like He loved on us. Now, I actually forgot to mention something during announcements. So there's a family that has just moved into this community just recently. Um, and they're a large family, lots of kids. They are a, a beautiful, loving, warm family. And they literally have nothing. That's not true because there's been some people that have loved on them already and provided them with so much stuff. But they have five kids living with them, three others that aren't with them at the moment. Mum and Dad has a mattress. The five kids don't. They're sleeping on the floor. I didn't know what Denise was preaching on this morning. I had no idea. And I should have mentioned it beforehand but we want to love on this family. So if you have the ability to help us with that, then please come and see me or Perry afterwards where we can love even more on this family. And that's one way that we can walk alongside Jesus with what He is doing. He's at work in this community. Can I hear an amen? He's at work in this community. He is in the work in people's lives. We are hearing it more and more and more. God, help us as we step out in faith with You. You have called us forward. Lord, I pray that we will be obedient and respond to help unwrap the things that bind the people that we live with and amongst each day. Help us to be obedient. We thank You that You know us and You know the, the smelly stuff that goes on in our lives and that You're prepared to be with us, but not just with us, with every single person that lives and breathes in this world right now. Lord, may our hearts burn like Yours does for those people, that we might walk alongside them too and peel back that onion, break through that first tough layer and get to the softer stuff on the inside. We know You're at work before us and we want to join You with that. So God, help us do that day by day by day. Help us to be on the lookout and the listen out for means and ways to help others. And may it start 
in me today. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Let's finish by singing this song again together as a declaration as we go out that we will speak Jesus and a benediction to take us out now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory. Let's stand as we declare this together this morning.
Have a fantastic week, everybody. If you're staying for Connect, please grab a coffee and hang around and shout the name of Jesus as you go. Amen.